This is a walkthrough of booting up an HP 3000 uh, Series 918. This is a Spectrum system, of course. Uh, this is an old HP terminal that is the console. Which the current system on, which I can't show because it's buried way back here. Okay. Get you powered up. It's going to do a couple of internal tests. And then it starts communicating with the console. The status line down in the bottom uh, will give you an indication where it is in the boot up process. Uh, after the word in it, that four digit hex number indicates the uh, step it is on. If you have a memory failure issue, the system will hang at this point, and then you can determine which bank it is by looking up the, uh, the step number. Uh, it seems like the first two digits indicate the step, and then the second two digits are the bank number of the memory that's failed. So it takes a minute or two for it to process through this to the point where it will actually start communicating with the console. All right, now we went from init to test. And then init C640 is close to done. All right, now we're communicating. So the first thing I do is I, I don't actually boot this system up. Um, well, I mean, I do. We're going to type in boot here. But when it says interact with IPL, I'm going to say yes, because I don't want this system to boot. All the way through, I'm going to stop it and run the clock utility. Okay, now at this point there's various things you can do. The thing that I want to do, I always want to do, is run the clock utility. The reason being, even though I put a new battery into the motherboard, uh, the system stays turned off for a year, and for whatever reason, uh, it, it still loses time. <clears throat> so what we do is we type in C-L-K-U-T-I-L. That loads the clock utility. We'll read the clock. Now, I actually have already booted this one time today and set the clock so it is correct, but normally it is not correct. And you set it, you do S. And you put in the month and day. 0305. This keyboard is very sticky and drops characters as well, so I have to check everything I do pretty carefully. Oh, nine, three, four. And yes. And then I like to read it just to make sure it is correct. And then X the clock utility. There are other uh, utilities that you can run here. Type in HE. Let me show you some of the commands. And LS is... I'm not going to run any of these. But that's how you would get in to run these things. Uh, key diag is terminal diagnostic. 
the X map will show you. Yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, at this point, I'm ready to reboot the system. We're going to start. No recovery. No recovery indicates that it is going to uh, delete all the spool files. date in here. If for some reason uh, you didn't mess with the clock until uh, you can set it there. However, when you reboot, it uh, will not read the correct clock again. So you have to reset or retype the time in every time. All right, we're booting. It's right here, the hard drive there. Boot process is reasonably slow. Okay, it's mounted the hard drives. There have been times when I've had the hard drive mount fail uh, because the hard drive itself failed, and I had ended up having to replace the hard drive with an old Macintosh SCSI hard drive which there weren't many around then, there aren't any around now. DCC was the old terminal controller. Okay, it is now reading the startup commands. It's logged in the operator. Network transport is running. Network services are running. So you notice job one logged off there. It's this why net on. And at this point, the system is running. JINET D is the network control job. It always runs. And then, of course, operator sys is the console. Uh, at this point, I would typically go back and log into the system using uh, uh, VT Manager at my desk, just to make sure that works. And that is about all I normally do to make sure the system's running anymore. So once I'm happy with that, uh, I'm going to do a Control A, shut down. rather slow. Didn't like something I did there. Not sure what. Control A. This keyboard again is really funky. Oh, no, it's currently shutting down. There we go. Just very slow. All right. So I'll shut 16 there. A normal system will go, uh, why shut 16 first? I don't know, but the last two you would see are shut 4, and you'd see a shut 5 and a shut 6. This system, uh, the way that it's configured, it has never successfully made it to a shut 5 or a shut 6. Definitely not a shut 6. Maybe if you wait around long enough, it'll make it to a shut 5. Oh, look at that, shut 5. Okay, that's as far as it's going to make it. 
So typically what I do is once I get to shut five, just wait. Oh my god, it did a shut six. Alright, this never happens. Typically it gets to shut five and I just wait for a while until I hear the hard drive's not moving. Uh, this time it made it shut six. Can't explain it. When I did this uh, right before this take, it never made it this far. So anyway, system's down. At this point I would normally just turn off the power. Uh, if you want to bring the system back up, you do a control B. And then you can type in TC to do a transfer control, which is essentially a cool start, or an RS, which is a hard start, which will basically do all of the memory tests again, too. So um, this is as far as I normally go.